Hold right there, newcomer. I welcome you to Edessa, but before you enter, I must catalog your visit. Please answer the questions as truthfully as possible. It's imperative that our tallies be accurate. Now, what brings you to Edessa? Excuse my rudeness. I am Senar Bruges, Talier second class to the Domus Politica. My purpose is to sort those that come to Edessa, to welcome them to the city while maintaining the delicate balance we gnomes have achieved. Yes, well, at least you look more put together than some of the people that came here before you. Poor sods. With any luck, your errands go without incident. Now, where have you come to Edessa from? F f for Morris Hughes? You mean to say you've come from Alistar? Yes, I, I see it now. They were wrong about your nose, but you match the description of the one I was to look out for. We can dispense with the remainder of my questions. You are free to enter Edessa. Sandstone Villa will serve as your lodgings. Temporarily. This is rare, newcomer. Very rare. If I can speak frankly, I'm not sure this is the blessing you take it to be. True, you have been saved from the squalid lodgings of the Hospitalis Quarters. But Sandstone Villa is reserved for... Uh, well, it is not my place to speak of it. This key will provide you with access to the villa. You would do well to be very aware of your surroundings, stranger. Now, good day. Yes, yes, go on. What now? There! Halt! Don't let me catch you making trouble again. Die! Require something? something what what Yes. Yes? What do you want? I am not in the habit of making conversation with strangers, especially one of your stature. Please be quick. I see. Think very, very carefully about what you are saying. Octien is a Templar. He is in a position of the highest authority. And who, may I ask, are you? For you to accuse Octien without having a direct confession is not only meaningless, but contrary to all our procedures. Even if this were true, or even already suspected, it would have to be corroborated by Octien himself. That requires a confession. As he is not here to present the charges himself, I must assume that no such confession exists. Now, I have done all I can for you. Please, trouble me no further with this matter, especially with such insufficient evidence. 
We have already discussed this. Nothing short of a confession would convict him. As such, Templar Octien will remain undisturbed in the Lavrarium. to send regrets on behalf of Templar Joriel. While she wishes to extend you aid, she's stymied by protocol. What she gave you was an official response. I'm here to give you another response. A personal one. I am a political aid for Templar Joriel. I operate in a number of capacities for the Templar's official and unofficial business. My superior has suspected for some time the crimes that you've levied against Templar Octien. But like you, she is frustrated by his status. Allow me to be direct. If you can make Templar Octien publicly acknowledge his crimes, then Templar Joriel will reward you. She will be your patron of sorts. You wish to bring the Templar to justice, yes? then you must get him to publicly acknowledge his crimes in some form. As my superior no doubt told you, the Templar may be found in the Livrarium. I suggest you go there. Yes? You! You're alive! What an unexpected and quite unfortunate turn of events. For starters, he expected you to be rotting in a sandy ditch somewhere. Supper for the carrion birds. Understand. You and I are alike. All we both want is to see this business reach its end. Did it? Here you stand, suspecting me of a great many crimes, yet unable to lift a finger. Tell me, who has the power? Or what? You'll slaughter me in a murderous rage? Typical. Your kind is as predictable as it is stupid. I'm afraid you'll find me quite hard to kill. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for you. Attack me in this city, and I won't just have you clapped in irons. No, I'll hand you over to the scholars in the Basilica for research. 
A long career supporting vivification research has left me with certain advantages. You could say I'm more resilient than most of your enemies. The wise and the foolish both die. Is that justice? With the will of souls, I can change that. I can choose who deserves life. To think that yous gave away such a gift to you. Well, we've seen how you wasted your life. Perhaps I'll give Intrinio your corpse to examine. After all, you met your first death as his assistant. It would be a reunion. Of course. And it's such a pity you'll never find out.
Well, if setting fire to the Livrarium and hiring assassins is not an admission of guilt on Octien's part, I certainly don't know what is. It is clear that we Templars must make him assume responsibility for his actions, overt as well as hidden. Even though you went against my explicit instruction, you were effective. You have my respect. Should he survive the wounds earned in battle, I should think so. To that effect, I have ordered a moratorium on all of his current studies and projects. All, perhaps, save this mysterious well of souls. That one will take some deliberation, considering its various ethical and societal ramifications. Regardless, Gnome Society is in your debt, and we always pay what is owed. Ventrinio Desolini. One name I never expected to be brought into this business. It seems he has escaped the gallows yet again. I believe your friend Scholar Hughes may be able to help. While you were here, my people found him salvaging the tomes Octien attempted to burn. Now, you must excuse me. A Templar has fallen from power, and Odessa's political buzzards are circling. Salutations. It was my mistake to assume that Octien would go quietly, or that he would leave evidence behind. Such a waste. Some of those books he burned were centuries old, but luckily for us, I was able to salvage some from the flames. Oh, great many prizes. Treatises on the nature of death, tables upon tables of autopsy analyses, but only one item of true value. Octien's diary. Based off of what I've read in these pages, Ventrinia has been working on an island off of Cluricon. I'm afraid the dark wood of Cluricon still hides our Tawatha enemies. But this young lady, Aileen Shear, says she has a solution for that. When you reach Ventrinia, beware. He is certainly a genius, but complicated. He may try killing you the second time for good measure. His mind may be dangerous. But it holds the secret to entering Alabastra, and you must find it. Oh, I will. In fact, I believe I'll be staying in Odessa to offer what support I can. With Octian out of the way, the people will be needing a new Templar, after all. There won't be enough to get where we need to go. Don't play games with me. I'm not looking for some chosen one to solve my problems. We just happen to have the same enemies in Alabastra. Are you certain you can't remember anything about your past life? How sweet. Maybe you did have a family. Kids at home, lover by the fire. Maybe even a cuddly little dog and a hand-stitched quilt. Maybe they died with you. Maybe they survived you and moved on. Maybe they were never fond of you in the first place. No, not anymore. You really mean that, don't you? I think I was wrong about you. This is no trick. Here, take this charm. I hope it brings you good luck. You may need it, depending on what you find out. Agreed. We are facing more important problems than your ongoing identity crisis. The Tuatha have laid siege to the eastern city of Melsenshire for years, and the time has come to break it. A few years ago, one warrior could have slipped past unnoticed, but stealth is no longer an option, not even for me. But there is hope. In the plains of Erethel there waits a player who has been away from this game for far too long. It is time to contact General Talera. Meet me in the village of Emer, and I will tell you everything. 
Be on your way. Good will come of visiting the hospitality. Mm. Salutations. Mm. Another?
We would have been lost without Elrod Edmund. He was a great officer in the war, but was sent home when a Mergen left its trident in his back. Welcome! Hello there. 
Greetings, stranger. Damn refugees. I am Katrin. Do you require my healing touch in mind, body, or both? Be careful out there. Just give me yes. a straight answer. Is the general still in the cradle of summer? She is for as much good as it'll do her. But the cards don't lie. She'll never get that door open. Fate says it's so. Yes. Well then I suppose we'll just have to change fate, won't we? Thank you for coming all this way. I don't know if you heard that, but it sounds as if General Talera is still here, in exile. For all but losing the fortress of Mel Sinshir. Long ago, Talera led our forces, but then the Tuatha produced a foe she could not best. Her forces barely survived the retreat out of Clurakan. Many blamed her for the loss, to have built up hopes so high, only to have them topple. That was Talera's crime, and she has paid for it, day after day. You're as quick as ever. Talera is in the cradle of summer, banished from the battlefields of Mel Sanchea until she can atone for her past. According to the Fate Weaver here, she seeks an artifact from Ural Tusk that might break the siege and aid our forces. But she cannot do so alone, for poor Talera is fated never to succeed. That is where you can help. Last I heard, General Talera was somewhere in northern Erethel, searching for a way to turn the tide of the war. I think she took a squad to Earl Tusk. 
You should be just what the general's looking for.
from the general. Hail. I am General Talera Ap Gwydion, former commander of the Eastern Alpha forces. Surely you're not the aide Aelin Shear promised. She spoke as if she planned to send a whole squad of soldiers, not one faceless mercenary. You have the bearing of one that's seen combat, but you never fought in the war, or you would know who I am. Once, I was the commander of Mel Sen Shear, the Alpha Fortress to the east. I held back the Tuatha at every push before the Baylor came. Then everything fell to pieces. So, she is behind this. That woman. One too many times she's meddled in my affairs, making promises she never intends to keep. Well, perhaps it is for the best. The fewer people involved in my affairs, the better. You see, misfortune follows closely at my heels. It is the lot fate has cast for me. The years have been long since I first learned of the means that might deliver Mel Sen Shear from the Tuatha. It lies in Earl Tusk, beyond a gate fated never to be opened, in a hall awash with Niskaru. Any who seek access to the ruin must face them. These ruins are said to be the resting place of the Piercing Light, a spear carved from the tusk of the Niskaru Duke, Gajor. The legends say it destroys any horror, in the mind or on the battlefield. No place is more deserving of such a power as Melsen Shear. For all my years of research, I've only ever found one clue to this puzzle, when the great voices rise in song. It may refer to the wind stones scattered across the plains. They bear a striking resemblance to the stones of this ruin, but that's simply me grasping at answers. Take this chime. It is said to have been taken from the ruin during its construction many centuries ago. I've tried using it on the windstones with no luck. The inscription says the gate will open when the great voices rise in song. I think this means the windstones that are spread across Erethel. There's one just a little to the south. Go there and strike this chime near it. I'll stay here to see if it has any effect. The windstones are located all across the plains. the general I I can't believe it the gate shifted for all my efforts you simply appear and make it respond no you've opened one part of the gate but four more remain you must find the wind stones scattered throughout the plains and activate them I will remain here the Nascaro will sense that the seal is weakened someone must try to hold them back Go sound the chime at each windstone in Arathel. That's the only way to open the gates. I'll stay here and fight any Niskaru looking to sneak past me.
Ugh. <laughs> 